Hello, happy Monday, everybody. So today we are actually going to jump ahead and start in on chapter four. So chapter four is all about exponential and logarithmic functions. So now that we are pretty comfortable with functions in general, we've looked at linear functions in detail. We also looked at quadratic functions. Next, we will talk about inverses and how they relate exponential and logarithmic functions. So let's go ahead and start on section 4.1, where we will be discussing inverses. So this will be a three video series for Monday. So first of all, let's just recall some basic function notation. So originally we would start with our input or our domain values x, then we'd run them through a function f, and out we would get f of x. So we're all really comfortable now after chapter two with this function notation. Now what inverses do is they undo the original function. So instead of doing this in a forward motion, now imagine that you start with a value in here and you end up with the value on the left. So first of all, let's use proper notation here. We'll use a superscript of negative one. Now, this is not an exponent, so don't treat it like an exponent. Rather, it's just the notation for inverses. So let's write the formal definition down. Let's let f be the original function. Then we will say that f inverse is the inverse of f if, and here's where the definition gets a little bit tricky. First of all, the uh, domain of the inverse is the range of the original and the range of the inverse is the domain of the original. So swap domain and range. That's all we're saying here. And then we're also saying the following. So um, f inverse of y is equal to x if and only if f of x equals y. So notice, again, it really boils down to domain and range. For the original, here was our domain and here was our range. However, when you do this with inverses, we will then swap. So using inverse notation, this is now the domain. So notice I will be plugging in y values and getting out the x values. So it just switches the order. So here's the original, what we're used to. Here is it with the order switched. So I just want to make a note here about the notation. Remember, this is inverse notation. It is not exponential notation. So it is not equal to one over f. I see students do this a lot, assuming it's an exponent. So just be careful, it is not an exponent. So I think it is worthwhile for us to maybe look at um, just a quick sketch here that I have put together. So for my little sketch, I'm just going to try to draw this by hand. Let's say that we are given um, the following graph. So let's make the original function f of x go through and have a y-intercept at negative two, and then let's make its x-intercept at one half. So here's my original function f of x, and maybe I'll even put together a table. So if x was zero, y was negative two. If x was one half, y was zero. But on this same graph, 
let's also include the inverse function. So let me add a few more details to the sketch here. Minus one, minus two, and then um, one, two. So now if we do the inverse, we're going to swap. So let's go ahead and write down the table of values for the inverse. And I think this is probably the easiest way to start, just literally rewrite the ordered pairs in opposite order. So now x is at negative 2, 0, and then the other point is 0, 1 half. So here is our inverse function. And let's label it. So again, just a really quick example to help you kind of understand what we mean by an inverse i literally mean swap domain and range okay and that does affect the domain and range of course of the inverse function now we should talk a little bit more about compositions so if you are verifying inverses so let's say that you are given two equations and you are asked to determine whether or not they are inverses, you have to do the following compositions. So let's say if f is a function with inverse denoted as f inverse, then using compositions two things can happen so first of all you can compose your inverse with the original function so let's maybe look at our picture that i drew from before while we think about the notation here so this notation says start with x run it through f of run it through the f function, that's the first part, and then go ahead and run it through the inverse. And notice you end up with where you started. So again, I start at x, I run it through the f function, and then I compose that with running it back through the inverse, and I end up right where I started. So that's one composition. The other one is if you were to reverse the order in which you composed. So again, it's this idea that inverses undo one another. So this one says, let's say that I started here and I run it through the inverse first and then through F. Again, you should end up where you started. So if you are ever verifying that something is an inverse, um, algebraically, these are the compositions that you will need to perform. So let's go ahead and do an example that requires us to verify using composition. So in this example, verify f of x equals 2x minus 9 and f inverse of x which is x over two plus nine halves are inverses. So you will do several problems like this, verifying algebraically. So let's go ahead and do the first bullet point in my composition, f inverse of f of x. So this is good review for composition. So first replace f of x, with its function to x minus 9. Now take this input, input and plug it in to the inverse function wherever you have a variable. So 2x minus 9 divided by 2 plus 9 halves. So here, what you'll notice is upon simplification, 2x over 2 minus 9 halves plus 9 halves simplifies 2x. So we have now verified the first composition. Let's reverse the order. 
So f of f inverse of x is equal to f of x over 2 plus 9 halves. Again, replace the inverse function in here. Then take this input and plug it into the original f function wherever you had the variable. So 2 times the thing minus 9. And what you will notice upon distribution is that the 2s cancel x plus 9 minus 9, which is also just x. So again, anytime you're asked to verify whether or not two functions are inverses, you must go through these steps, leaving x as x in the work. So in the next video, we will learn how to find an inverse, and then we will introduce another definition. So I will be back shortly.